In this video, I'm going to show you how to get PS2 emulation up and running on the PC version of RetroArch. Welcome back to another emulation tutorial. Today we are covering the PS2 Emulation Core PCSX2 within the PC version of RetroArch. Now, that being said, if you're on PC and you want the best PS2 emulation experience possible, I wholeheartedly recommend checking out just standalone PCSX2. You're going to get a lot more functionality, a lot more updates, a lot more just cool stuff that goes along with it. You can use real PS2 controllers, DualShock 3s to get proper pressure sensitive buttons, and just overall it's way better than what you're going to get out of the RetroArch version of PCSX2. On the flip side though, if you're not interested in some of those features, the RetroArch version of PCSX2 does have the ability to use RetroArch's advanced shader options, which can in turn be a real plus. So definitely a bit of personal preference there, but again, if you're on PC, standalone PCSX2 is definitely the way you probably should be going, but I'm going to show you how to do this anyway. So let's get started. So first things first, get RetroArch installed onto your PC if you want help doing so. I have a video on how to get that set up for the standalone version of RetroArch and the Steam version of RetroArch. Though for the Steam version, you're basically just replacing with the standalone version, so I'd always recommend standalone over the Steam version any day of the week, but hey, your choice. Videos in the description below if you are interested. Once you have RetroArch installed on your computer and good to go, we are going to need to source PS2 BIOS files and game files. So starting with the PS2 BIOS file here. PS2 BIOS files can come in a number of formats. You will usually find these multi-file formats here or it's possible they could be a single file. But over on my channel, I have videos showing you how to dump these from your physical PS2 for use in emulation. So I have a guide on how to dump them from a fat PS2 here as well as a slim. The slim is definitely a lot easier, especially if you don't already have a modded system. But links to these will be in the description below. And as always, you could also resort to Google if you so choose. Just don't ask me for illegal download links because I'm not going to give them. But anyway, once you have your BIOS files sourced, we just need to add it to our RetroArch system folder. So open up your RetroArch folder. Find your system folder. And now we need to make a new subfolder within the system folder named PCSX2, all lowercase. And make sure you know how to spell, unlike me. So anyway, PCSX2, and then inside this folder, create another folder and name it BIOS. Again, all lowercase. Now open it up, and then just copy your BIOS files inside, and that is good to go. Next up, PS2 games. So if you have a large physical collection of PS2 games, rejoice. You can rip these to your computer with a DVD drive, and it's pretty simple. And once again, I have a video on the channel showing you exactly how to do that, if you are interested. Or again, you can resort to Google to find these. Again, I don't really care which method you go with, just don't ask me for those illegal download links. But let's talk about PS2 game format here real quick, because there's a number of different formats you're going to find PS2 games in if you're resorting to Google. Or if you dump them yourself, you could get a number of different formats as well. But but ISO is going to be your standard PS2 format. When you dump a game, it's going to be an ISO format for an overwhelming majority of your PS2 game library. CD-based games are going to be bin Q, but you only really need the bin file for PS2 emulation. Now, you may notice here that all of my games happen to be in CHUD format, except for Half-Life here, which is a CD game that I left in bin format. But anyway... PS2 games are pretty large, so I like to compress them to save up on space. So you can use a couple of different compression methods. There's CSO, GZIP, CHUD. I think CHUD is probably the easiest to work with and the quickly becoming the most popular, I think. So I converted my PS2 game library into CHUD format in one of my previous emulation tutorials for PS2 games. If you are interested in converting your games into CHUD format as well, I will have a link to this PS2 ISO to CHUD bat file as well as CHUDman. You put these in your PS2 game directory, run the bat file, and it will compress all of your games into CHUD format, which are then ready to be used on PCSX2 in RetroArch or standalone. But once you have your game sourced, if you've converted them to CHUD, if you have them in ISO, doesn't really matter, should be good to go either way. There's just an extra step we need to do if we have multi-disc games. So I have Xenosaga Episode 2 and 3 here. These are both two-disc games. So to get them to work right within RetroArch, you want to create a games playlist. So that is this M3U file I got right here. So I'm going to show you how to make one of these. 
So right click anywhere in your empty space, make a new text document, and then name it whatever you want. It shouldn't matter. So we're just gonna do that. Now open up the text document. And you're going to need to paste the file name of your game discs into the text document in the order you want them to play in. So you're gonna choose disc one first. And you want to get the file extension as well. And then just paste it right into the text document. And there we go. Then just go ahead and save it. And now you just need to rename the text file extension from .txt to m3u. And it'll throw up an error saying, hey, if you change the extension, it might not work. We're going to say, hey, that's okay. We know what we're doing. And there we go. That is how you make a multi-disc game M3U file for use on RetroArch. Now just go through and do the same process for all of your multi-disc PS2 games. So I already have it for Xenosaga Episode 3, so I'm not going to worry about that. But once you have your games good to go, you just need to put them anywhere on your PC. It doesn't really matter where they go, just put them somewhere. So for my demonstration purposes, I have a games folder inside this main RetroArch folder. And I'll just drag them right there. There we go. But now go ahead and open up RetroArch. So, let's see here, open that up. And then you can also attach any controllers at this point if you want to. From here, go to the online updater, core downloader and then press right or up arrow on your keyboard to go to the Sony section here and find Sony PlayStation 2 PCSX2 and then just press enter to download the core. And then from here we are free to begin loading up our PS2 content. So one method of doing so is to go to load content, navigate to the directory that you have your game stored in, And then choose a game, choose your core, and it should load right up as long as your BIOS file is a good one. So there we are, 007 Nightfire PS2 version running in the PC version of RetroArch. Now another method of loading up your PS2 content would be to make a games playlist within RetroArch. So my favorite method of doing this is to press F5 on the keyboard to load up the RetroArch desktop menu. And once the desktop menu loads up, just right click over in this left hand space, new playlist, type in Sony, space dash space, PlayStation 2. And now you'll have a new Sony PlayStation 2 playlist entry with a cool console logo right here. So click on that. And now right click in the middle white box, add folders, and then just navigate to where your PS2 games are stored. Core, PCSX2, Database, Sony PlayStation 2, and then just press OK to have it find your games. Now this is when things can be a bit interesting for your multi-disc games here. So it found my M3U file, and then it found my base files here. So I'm just going to delete these ones from my playlist because I don't want those multi-disc files having three separate entries. And there we go. Now another thing you could do is try to download cover art for your playlist if you want to pretty it up a bit. So you could just right click on a game and tell it to download the thumbnail. Chances are it won't find it unless you have them named a very specific way. So typically it's looking for the game name followed by a region code. So for example, if we edit this one here, just add USA at the end. Try that out and see if it can now find it. Oops. Yes, there it goes. Now it was able to find it. So then you could just go through and do that for all of your games if you desire. But chances are there will be times where it cannot find them because you just need to name the game exactly the way it's looking for it. And that can get kind of tedious at times. So, so what I like to do in these cases instead is just manually download a cover art and put it in myself. So one of my favorite methods is just to head over to GameFAQs, look up the game in question, head to the media section here, click on boxes, and look, now there's a nice selection of different cover arts for various regions of the game. So 
All right, I don't want the greatest hits version. Let's go with the original release version for the US here. Right click, save image as, put it on my desktop. Now I'll just move RetroArch out of the way, and there's my cover art. So I just need to make this a .png file instead of a JPEG. So I'm just gonna open up Paint here real quick. Drag it in. And then just save it as a PNG picture. I'm not even gonna change the name of it or anything. There we go. There we go, there's my new PNG format version. So now I'm just gonna make sure Ace Combat 4 is selected in my quick menu, or desktop menu here rather. And then just drag the picture into the box art screen here. And there we go, it is now applied. And then you can just go through and do this with all of your games if you desire. I'm gonna call it there for my demonstration though. So now that my playlist is made, I'm just gonna close out of the desktop menu. Gonna press F on my keyboard to full screen RetroArch once again. And to get the playlist to appear, I'm just gonna tell it to restart RetroArch. And now we have a nice new PS2 playlist entry here on the left, and the games I bothered putting cover art for are displaying them as well. But now all you need to do is select game and tell it to run. And there we go, PS2 emulation up and running on the PC, uh, or, yeah, PC version of RetroArch once again. All right, now let's talk about multi-disc games. So here we have Xenosaga Episode 2 loaded into disc number 2. And when you click on New Game, it's going to ask me to switch it over to disc 1 once I get past some of this initial setup here. So let's just get through that real quick. And there we go. Please insert disc 1 of Xenosaga Episode 2. So to change discs, you need to press F1 on your keyboard to go to the Quick Menu. Scroll down to Disc Control. Press Eject Disc, and you'll see a Current Disc Index option pop up here. And now when you expand this, you will see all of the discs that were included in your M3U file. So just choose the disc you need. So I'm going to choose Disc 1. And then I'm going to tell it to insert the disc. Now you might experience errors with disc swapping under normal default RetroArch settings. So if that happens to you, you can just press F1 to go back into the quick menu. Back out to your main menu here, go to Settings, User Interface, scroll down to Pause Content when Menu is active, and disable it. And then you can go back in, Quick Menu, Disk Control, Eject the Disk, change back over to Disk 1. But then it should load up and begin the new game as expected, or the disk swap as expected, because you probably aren't going to be doing a weird demo like I am where you're starting from disc 2 and going to disc 1. But there we go, Xenosaga episode 2, disc 1 has loaded up, I've started a new game, and there we go. And with that, you should be good to go for an overwhelming majority of your PS2 games library. But there's so much more emulation allows us to do, such as messing with internal resolution and things like that. So now we're going to cover the advanced settings that come with the PCSX2 version in RetroArch. So pressing F1 on the keyboard, we can go into our quick menu and scroll down to core options. And first up we have our system options here. So this is where you could change your BIOS if you have multiple BIOS in your BIOS folder. System language, you can enable or disable fast loading. So this is a setting that can affect um, some games negatively. So I just recommend leaving it off personally. Next up, Fast Boot. You can disable the PS2 boot animation if you don't want it to show up. Do note that if you turn on Fast Boot, you will have a region-free BIOS setting enabled. So if you only have one PS2 BIOS file, but you're trying to play games for multiple regions, you will want to enable Fast Boot so you don't have to worry about region checks. So recommend turning this one on, especially for those of you that want to have multi-region game compatibility. Next up, Boot to BIOS. So this will let you boot into the PS2 BIOS to manage memory card settings and uh, save files and things like that. So if you ever need to go into your PS2 BIOS, just tick this one on, do everything you need to do in the BIOS, and then you can take it off. Next up, memory cards. So the memory card in slot one is set to a shared eight megabyte memory card by default, and I recommend leaving it that way. If you want to add extra storage to your PS2 emulation within RetroArch, go down to slot two and change this to a 32 megabyte shared memory card. So that way you can store games you're not actively playing on the secondary card while all your main saves go on the first card. 
Next up, video. So this is where you will change a lot of different settings. So renderer, this is set to auto by default. Recommend leaving it there for the time being. Next up, internal resolution. So this is where you're gonna scale up your PS2 games. So how far you can scale this is gonna depend on your PC. If you have a powerful PC, you're gonna be able to crank this up a lot higher. If you have a less powerful PC, not as much. So crank it up as high as you want. If you get lag where you didn't have lag before, crank it back down. So I'm just gonna go with a 4K scale here personally for my system hardware. Next up, de-interlacing mode. This is set to automatic by default. And if we expand the option menu, there are a lot of options available, but the one that you're probably gonna be most interested in is the no interlacing patch. So the PCSX2 core in RetroArch has a lot of these patches built into it by default, which can then be applied to the games. Now do be aware that not every game supports no interlacing patches, so if it doesn't find one, it's probably going to just fall back to automatic or bob or weave or blend, so do be aware of that. Next up, aspect ratio, so you can choose between 16x9 or 4x3 for your PS2 game output. Next up, enable widescreen patches. So this will apply widescreen patches to a number of games that have them built into the PCSX2 core's internal database. If you turn this option on, make sure that you have set the aspect ratio to widescreen. Next up, 60 FPS patches. So the core, once again, has certain patches built in to allow certain games to run at higher frame rates than they did on original hardware. I don't have a list of games on hand, but you can try it out and see what you find. Next up, anti-aliasing. You can turn this on or off. Personal preference. Same with anisotropic filtering. Next up, dithering. You can scale the dithering to match your internal resolution, leave it unscaled, or you can turn it off. Next up, texture filtering. This is set to bilinear PS2 by default, which is the most accurate look for PS2 games, but you could change it up to different versions of the bilinear filter if you want to, just a personal preference on how it looks there. Mint mapping, I recommend leaving this one on automatic. Conservative buffer allocation, leave this one on accurate. Accurate date, leave this one on. Next up, GPU palette conversion. So if you have a CPU that isn't as strong for PS2 emulation, you can offload the GPU palette, er, yeah. You can offload the palette conversion to GPU to try to get back some power for your CPU. Can result in some speed ups for some games. So you could try it out. If it doesn't really do anything, you could just leave it off. And we're gonna skip over frame skip because no. All right, so next up, game pads. So first option, enable rumble, self-explanatory. If you don't want rumble, turn it off. Next up, rumble intensity, so you can set the rumble strength. And then finally, left and right stick dead zones, so you can change the dead zone settings on your controllers. Moving on, emulation tab. First up, enable cheats. If you want to be able to use PCSX2 PNAC files to use cheats within RetroArch, you can do so. So you enable the option here. Then all you need to do is go into your RetroArch folder, system folder, PCSX2 folder, Find the cheats folder that was created when you first ran PCSX2 on RetroArch. And then you would drop your PNAC files right inside and they will load up for those games. And then you would edit the PNAC file for the cheats like always. But moving on, speed hack preset. This is set to safe by default. If you have a slightly lower end computer, you could turn this on balance to get a little bit more speed out of it without any real negative side effects. But I wouldn't recommend going any higher than this. And then for the rest of the options in here, I really don't recommend messing with them unless they need to be changed on a per game basis. And to figure that out, you can look at the PCSX2 wiki for per game settings. Next up, the hacks tab. This one is again, going to be on a mostly game by game basis. So some things like align sprites and merge sprite are gonna be useful for upscaling your games, but pretty much everything else is going to be on a game specific case. So for example, if you want to play something like Gran Turismo 4, there's some interesting things that can happen within hardware emulation. So you can do a workaround to enable things like Merge Sprite, Wild Arms Offset, Half Pixel Offset to overcome them. And again, the PCSX2 wiki is going to be your best friend for getting those per game settings set up. So again, most things in here are going to be set on a game by game basis, but that's going to do it as far as the core options are concerned. So. If you do have the things that need to be set on a game by game basis, you go up to manage core options and you save them as a game options file. So that way they're applied to that game and that game only and not the entire core. But one of the last things I wanted to cover here for PS2 emulation within the PC version of RetroArch is shaders. So going back into our RetroArch quick menu, scroll down to the shaders option here. 
and then you can enable them if they're off. And then you can just begin loading up shader presets. So one of my favorite go-tos is always going to be CRT Easy Mode. I think it just provides a nice grid line look over your games, and it works on native resolution content as well as upscaled content for a nice look. Again, shaders are very personal preference. There's no such thing as one size fits all when it comes to them. So just go through them, see which ones you like, and just run with it. And when you have one that you do like, you could just save it, and you can save it as a core option, a game option, it doesn't really matter. But there we go. So, so here's CRT Easy Mode running on PCSX2 within RetroArch here on Need for Speed Underground. Again, I think it looks really nice. It provides a good grid line effect. So this is usually my typical go-to for most things. But that's going to do it for PS2 emulation within the PC version of RetroArch. Once you get it set up and running, you are able to experience a vast majority of your PS2 games library in a pretty competent fashion. But again, you do miss out on a lot of advanced features that the standalone PC version of PCSX2 is going to give you. But regardless, thank you so much as always for watching today's tutorial. I hope you have found it interesting and it helps you get your PS2 emulation projects up and running in any variety of ways that you hope to do so, whether that's standalone PCSX2 or RetroArch. But here at the end of the video, I do have a couple of favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that like or dislike button, depending on how much you like today's tutorial. As well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. I have loads of content coming your way, and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keeping it going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to helping us keep this place up and running and bringing this content to you, and as an added bonus, I do upload all of my config files for my personal emulation settings to all of my backers over on my Discord channel. So that way you could just download those and drop them into your own emulation folder, and hey, you'll have the same settings that you see on my screen here. But big shout out to all of our current backers. Thank you so much for believing what we do here and helping us keep it going and just being amazing. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.